Greetings. I am back at it. So I am in the, um, well, central Pennsylvania right now for the next 12 days. 12 days I'm going to be riding. <laughs> I was going to call this adventure the Great 7-Eleven Adventure. Seven trails in 11 days. And then last night I counted and I realized it's 12 days. <laughs> so 7-12 doesn't sound sexy. The Great 7-12 Adventure. That just that, that, that doesn't do it. So i got to come up with something a little bit more uh, exciting. But uh, yeah, that's the, that's the gist of it. I've ridden a lot of trails on the eastern side of PA. Well, because I live over there. I live in little old Delaware. So, you know, there's a there's a lot of great trails. But a lot of subscribers and um, have commented, hey, come over to the, the, the western side of PA. There's a lot of little trails. And I should send out a thank you to Dave and Heidi from uh, Reimagined Adventures. If you don't subscribe to their channel, you should, because they're a great couple. They know how to have a great time. They have inspired me on many occasions. Anyway, they went from Erie to Pittsburgh. I'm gonna hit a lot of the trails that they rode on, but first things first, I'm gonna stop off at the Pine Creek Trail, just cause I can. And I love the Pine Creek Trail. And I'm gonna stay tonight at the uh, Petticoat Junction Campground because that's one of my favorite places, as you know, if you've watched any of my other videos for the Pine Creek Trail. Uh, but I've got a surprise waiting for me at the campground. You gotta watch. You gotta... <laughs> anyway, it's uh, it's kind of it's been overcast and sunny and you know kind of back and forth today. But it's um, great weather, and uh, I'm really looking forward to getting started off. So 12 days. I think I'm gonna put these videos out as independent videos, like one for each trail, and then I think I'm gonna do one all together. How's that? Will you agree to that? Would you watch them if I did that? <laughs> I hope so. Anyway, welcome along for the ride. Can't wait. Okay, so logistics wise, when I've ridden the Pine Creek in the past, I have generally started in Jersey Shore on the south end and then biked my way north. And instead, um, I'm going to start on the north end. I'm going to go up to uh, Wellsboro, well, outside of Wellsboro, I think it's called Wellsboro Junction. There's a parking lot at the very north end called the Butler Access Point, Butler Access Parking Lot, something like that. I'm going to park there. Many people have asked me, it's probably the number one question about Pine Creek Trail, is where can I park? And the reality is you can park just about anywhere on the trail so long as you call the Department of Forestry uh, and let them know you're going to leave your car there. They're very gracious, very helpful. I called, I told them what I wanted to do. They asked for my license plate and car just so they would be aware and... Uh, very very nice people and how nice they offer a place for you to park and you know I'm gonna go on the record that it is safe I've never had an issue and I've done it many many times As you know, this is one of my favorite trails in the whole world. <laughs> I will say that I've ridden it in all four seasons. And it is just as beautiful in the dead of winter. It's a, uh, you know, I got another video just on how to, I don't know, tips on riding this trail. And I really think, if you just, if you just kind of want to get your feet wet before you go on a longer ride, this is a great trail to start. But, you know, I say that as if it's not something for a seasoned rider, and I just keep coming back here. I love it. It's, it's uh, uniquely beautiful because of the canyon. So, well, that's why I enjoy it so much. 
How you doing? camera on there are a lot of cyclists out today I should also point out if you haven't read it can you read that <laughs> retirement plan this is a Father's Day gift from my son that about says it I've gotten like three compliments already and I'm only four, five miles in <laughs> so I got uh, I think I'm only 30 35 miles today it's uh, the whole trail, for those of you that, oh yeah, I guess we should back up. For those of you that have never ridden the Pine Creek Trail. Well, the estimates are between, I've seen 62, I've seen 67 miles. It is a rail trail, converted rail trail. Uh, I guess historically this was a logging trail. And uh, then was a mining trail for a while, and uh, you know it's a kind of typical rail trail. There's there's rail towns about every ten miles or so, and some of them are very small, and then some of them are, you know, small town. And yes, every now and then you go over a road just like that. But uh, by and large, like a typical rail trail, it is safe and off-road and generally flat i think they say there's upwards to like a three percent grade on this trail but probably the most unique thing oh, okay so sorry it was a it was a rail line they tore up the the tracks in 1989 and uh you know turned it into this what makes this one unique is it goes through what some people call the Pennsylvania Gorge, Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. And you'll see when we get up here, you're down in a, it's, it's a canyon, you know? Yeah, I mean, whatever, not like Grand Canyon, but still pretty amazing. And you're down in it with mountains on either side. And the campground you'll see tonight is at a little bend in the river and there's mountains on either side of it. It's kind of breathtaking. About, about 10 miles in and I said we we're gonna get down in the canyon <laughs> all right here you go
All right, so I was gonna do a frequently asked question video. And uh, I thought, nah, I'm not gonna do that. I think what I'll do is I'll just throw a question in every now and then while riding. What do you think of that? Uh, good idea, bad idea? And I'll not take five minutes to answer every question. Maybe like 30 seconds to a minute. That's what I'm thinking. Let me know your thoughts. You can't see it, but in my little feed bag, I gotta, I've been writing down the questions. You know, I get them in YouTube comments. I also have been getting an increasingly amount of emails, which is great. I think people ask something on email because they don't want people to, I don't know, they don't want people to see their question. Some of them I understand why, some of them are very personal. But, um, all right, question number one. Somebody asked me, how do I decide what to film? And then secondly, what do I put? What do I decide what I'm gonna put in a film, in a, in a video? Excellent question. First one's easy. If I think something looks beautiful, I take photos of it. <laughs> if something happens that I think is funny, I take a video. In fact, another person asked me, why am I laughing so much? Or giggling, somebody accused me of giggling. Well, most of the time it's because something funny just happened. That's why. Anyway, okay, I didn't, I, yeah, yeah, what do I, what do I decide makes into a film? Okay, this might be of interest to some people. A few of you said, why are your videos so damn long? I would say, I'd say 50% of the footage I take makes it into the YouTube video. And, you know, let's face it, some, some of the scenes just blend together, and if I feel like, wow, that doesn't look a whole lot different than what was, you know. I cut it. The other thing I do is I generally let the camera run just to catch the unexpected. If something happens, a rabbit runs across the trail, bird swoops down. You know, you, you don't often have the camera running for that. So I don't know if that's a good answer or not. Oh, another question was, do I film every single ride I go on? And the answer is no, not at all. I probably film about, wow, 30, 40% of the rides I go on. If it's gonna be an overnight or more than a few days, yeah, I'm gonna film it. But yeah, about 50% of what I film goes on YouTube. So, hey, if you're complaining about my videos being long, it could be a heck of a lot longer. Don't tempt me. I've been asked a lot, how do I choose routes? And, uh, well, there's a lot of ways to answer that. If you've been a member, a subscriber of this channel, you know I love rail trails and, and you know, that's, that's the first answer. As long as there's rail trails out there, <laughs> I, I'm gonna pick those. And, 
And thanks to you that have suggested different trails. I, I Look, I don't take that lightly. That goes on a list. I look it up. I scribble down details. And... Okay, I'll have to come back if somebody needs help here. Yeah, all right. Help somebody fix their chain. My gosh, that was the cleanest chain I think I've ever seen. <laughs> wow. Good for them. I don't know why that chain link pod. Anyway, all right. So back to picking a route. Oh yeah, the second part B to that question is uh, I'm gonna. I'll admit it. Listen, I'm a copycat. I subscribe to a whole lot of YouTube riders. And if I see them out there, they're having fun. I, I want to have fun. So, uh, you know, my somebody asked me about my Florida trip. How did I choose that? Well, I watched a young couple that was riding the East Coast Greenway. And I really particularly liked the area that they rode in Florida. So, you know, not a big mystery. But I'll go back to the first part of that, part A. Rail trails are awesome. You don't have to contend with cars. Small town charm. They generally have nice distances associated with them and there's campgrounds and... I would love to create like a, a great national rail trail ride and just go around the country and ride. Well, that's what I'm doing this time. I'm just going around Pennsylvania, but I'm going to ride five new rail trails that I've never done before. There's the answer. That's too long. Got to edit that.
that little bend in the river I was talking about. Campgrounds right up on the right here. Oh, I love this area. Okay, I've stayed here three times before, but I have never done. Are you ready? Glamping. <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, I got situated and I'm gonna go out in search of dinner now. And I think I'm headed to Slate Run, where I stayed last time I was on this trail. There's the Hotel Manor. I think that's where I'm going to go, because there's not many places right around here to eat. There's one, like, sort of nice restaurant, but Cedar Run Inn, I think it's called. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm dressed for it, so I'm going to ride down about five miles to Slate Run and get some dinner. Wow. Did I just catch that on film? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, again, why do I just let the camera go? Because you get moments like that. Wow. How you doing? What's the verdict? <laughs> All right, Hotel Manor. I, you know, I've given it high marks as a place to stay. Well, I know, I've given it high marks as a place to eat, too. You know, it's about halfway, it's about the halfway point on the trail. So, you know, it's kind of strategically located. Nice place, great beer list. If you like beer, well, if you can't find a beer you like there, something's wrong with you. <laughs> All right, sorry, that was a little harsh. I'm just saying, they got a good beer list. So, if, if you can't, let me rephrase that. If you can't find a beer that you don't like, maybe you're, maybe you're too picky. Is that a little softer? I'm gonna go with that.
just happened. Uh, I think I will take the uh, road. Uh, Thursday so man I had a great night's sleep last night true confessions I struggle with sleep a lot uh, I just don't sleep well never have always been a you know can't get to sleep can't stay asleep but last night um, there was a really gentle little rain that started about, I want to say about 3 in the morning. I only know because I heard it and of course, you know, I'm in a strange place so I kind of woke up for literally just like a minute and then went back to sleep. The sound of rain, you know, there's rain on a tin roof. I've heard rain on the ocean. That's a beautiful sound. Rain on a tarpaulin tent roof. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. And I just, wow, I just crashed. I think I got like nine hours of sleep last night, which is unheard of. All right, beautiful campground. Said it before, Petticoat Junction. High recommendations. Anybody's asking where to stay? Well, you know, there's places to stay, but I give that five stars. Wonderfully hardworking young couple, but they invest a lot in that place. They're always upgrading things. They're always making it nicer. And the addition this year was that beautiful new building office. Well done. So I haven't mentioned in the past, they cater to long-term RV, uh, drive-in RV. They've got a couple little cabins. They have glamping, which I tried. And then they also have some new little, I think they're calling them glamping pods. That, uh, that's the only thing I haven't tried. And then the old caboose that used to be their office, you can stay in the caboose now. So, high marks, love it, quiet, nice people. Okay back to the trail heading back north to the car temperatures are about low 60s and uh, no complaints really beautiful today so far
this guy on the left up here. Oh, and man, super friendly. Oh, don't get separated from your mom. Oh, good. He's running. He or she is running back. Frequently asked question of the day. I get asked this a lot. Do I prefer going solo or riding with people? And uh, <laughs> it's a really good question because um, I prefer both. I'm kind of a social creature, so I like to be, I like to ride with people. Um, and I have certainly. Uh, I have a squeak in my chain. It is driving me up a wall. I have lubed this thing like to the point that it's almost absurd. Something's out of alignment. I've taken it to two bike shops. And both of them say they don't know what the problem is. Which answers another question. People ask me, are you always so happy? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. This is driving me nuts. <sighs> All right. Solo or with a group? Well, I like to ride with people. I generally, and I do ride with people. I don't record all the videos. I, I rode the gap with my oldest son. And uh, you know, a lot of our video was us talking about stuff that I didn't want to put out there for everybody. You know what I'm saying? All right, my other advice about riding with someone is you need to make sure that they're compatible and that you have agreements about certain things. How many miles you're gonna go? You're gonna stay indoors, you're gonna camp. What kind of food are you gonna eat? And, uh, you know, you've seen videos I have of my buddy Carl. Carl and I haven't ridden together for a while, which is a bummer. But, you know, Carl's a really easygoing guy. And so we kind of have a meeting in the minds about certain things. And, you know, we go in with an expectation of the way things are going to be. Now, one of the other most important things and I say this in order to be a good rider for somebody, is to be flexible. Because nothing ever happens the way you think it's going to. Weather gets bad. You have a mechanical issue. You know, you can't find the food you want. Or you can't find food. There you go. That would be a great video. How to be a great riding partner. I'm going to write that one down. Stay tuned.
lunch slash brunch at the Wellsboro Diner. I managed to sneak in there right before they closed. <laughs> and nice people. They didn't they didn't complain at all. In fact, one of the waitresses came over and even talked to me. So if she wanted to get out of there. <laughs> she struck up a conversation. <laughs> Anyway, um, I have a feeling when I go back and look at the video from today, it's going to be quiet. I don't think I was as chatty as normal. And the reason was, I was really deep in thought today. I think it's partially because it's kind of overcast and, and it was kind of foggy and cloudy down in the canyon today. And, and uh, so it was, it was one of those days for thinking, thinking about stuff. And uh, so you want to hear what I was thinking about? If you don't, I'm going to put a marker right there in the video. You can skip ahead. <laughs> the ramblings. I'm going to I'm going to ramble for a little bit. I'm I'm warning you. Anyway, one of the reasons that I was excited to retire was I really wanted to do this. I wanted to get out, see different parts of the, the country. I wanted to meet new people. People with different experiences in life. Well, there's something about bike touring. That's it. I mean, it's, I've said it a million times. It's one of my favorite things is engaging people on a different level. One of my frustrations in the business world was just, you know, you can work with somebody for years and years and years and you never really know them. There's a certain superficiality to work. I mean, part of it's just the nature of you're in a professional environment. You're working on a project. Or you're doing something like that. You don't... You, you know, you don't get a chance to meet people as, as maybe as deeply or as, as closely as you'd like. Combine that with the fact that I think the business world is becoming more and more, uh, how do I want to phrase it politically correct wise? Uh, people who walk on eggshells. I think people are growing increasingly scared to share who they are and what they think because it's not an open environment for that. I'm going to leave that one alone for right now. So anyway, again, meeting new people. Well, I think that's partially true. Or maybe it's one side of the coin. So yesterday, I was riding down the path and I happened to stop at a little rest area and there was a guy sitting at, a cyclist sitting at another one of the tables and I struck up a conversation, surprise, surprise. And, you know, we were we were talking about the trail and how beautiful it was and how you just, you know, whatever. And we're, he, we were talking about the adventure, where he was headed, where I was headed. And um, he was going to go a lot further yesterday, or at least he was planning on it. And so we kind of cobbled together information on what we could do. And nice conversation, you know, just... Okay, well, you may remember I was wearing a shirt yesterday that talked about retirement. And, and he said, oh, hey, notice my shirt. And he's like, so are you retiree? And I said, yeah, just, you know, I'm just two months into this. And he actually retired a year ago. So the conversation went in a totally different direction. And, and in, in five minutes, how could I put it? In five minutes, our bikes disappeared. The canyon disappeared. The Pine Creek disappeared. <laughs> we could have been sitting around a conference table at work. And, you know, rather than a guy in dirty shorts and a sweaty t-shirt and bugs in his face, he could have been in a suit and tie. I saw him in a totally different light. Not negative. I'm not saying it's negative. It's just... That's the two sides of the coin right there. I'm not sure it's so much I'm want to, I'm going to meet new people. Yeah, I'm, no, no, no. I am going to meet new people. But I'm going to meet them in a different context. That's the part B. So just like this guy. I could have had that second part of the conversation in, in my professional life. But the chance to meet someone in the context of, of what's really... It's an adventure. I know that's an overused word, but you know, you're seeing somebody in the midst of uh, physical effort and exertion. Okay, you're seeing them do something that is courageous. I don't think that's an exaggeration. 
I've seen them do something that stretches them out of their comfort zone. And again, we're not talking about a clean environment with a shirt and tie. We're talking about sweaty t-shirt and bugs. Now, I don't know. Does that make sense? Does any of that make sense? I apologize. Especially if you didn't click ahead and you actually watch this. I think that is the privilege of this time in life right now. Is to meet new people under the context of what brings out some of the best in people. There you go. <laughs> that was worth three hours of deep thought riding through a canyon today. I hope you appreciate that. <laughs> I am uh, driving, okay, to the next trail tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You got to watch. But I am on the way, and uh, I'm, I'm pumped. This is only day two out of 12 total days. So, uh, got to keep watching. New trail today, Allegheny River Trail. Morning. There is the river, right on cue. Uh, I'm gonna ride from, I started in Emlinton, just, I don't know, a mile back, two miles. I'm gonna go to Franklin and back. So, I don't know, I think that's like, 55, 60 miles? We'll see. All right, it rained a lot last night, and um, which brought the temperatures down considerably, down to uh, hovering right about 60. So this t-shirt was kind of optimistic. But the uh, sun has not peaked out yet at all. And given the tree cover here, I don't know, might not be any sun. Regardless, it is beautiful. The river is, wow, amazing. Well, anyway, let's, let's enjoy. seem kind of narrow. <laughs> I'm a little nervous going through that. All right, so the next few days, I'm gonna be doing some uh, essentially out and back rides. The, the great part about having the car is, you know, you can just drive to the start and ride and then leave basically all my stuff uh, you know, and then go, go ride. Wow, bumps. And um, day's over. All right, next day, ride, drive to the next trail. Super picturesque. Put on my headset. I got it. I can't see anything in there. Oh, I guess it's gonna make a turn. All right, I did find the headset, but I'll be honest, it ain't doing much. Oh, there's the end. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's. <laughs> Okay, for any of you that have been in the Paw Paw Tunnel. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like that. <laughs> I 
All right, you're probably only seeing like a little speck of light. And I don't know why I'm feeling so confident to ride like as fast as I am. All right. Alright, so that was the uh, Rockland Tunnel, and to summarize that plaque, wow, it um, was built by uh, European immigrants working six days a week, two shifts, 10 to 12 hours each, getting paid 17 cents an hour. Didn't say, I think it said it implied a couple years maybe to build that. Wow, can you imagine clawing through that with 1915 technology? What a life. Be thankful. Be thankful, people. Why do I say that? <laughs> I'm the, uh, well, I'm a descendant of those. European workers and uh, when I think about how hard they worked my wife's family immigrants you know they worked their butt off and uh, there's lots of ways to respond to that I choose to respond with a bit of Thanksgiving and gratefulness Look at the world around us and the buildings we enjoy and appreciate and the infrastructure, the early infrastructure, some of which is still around. Well, I'm riding on some of it right now. A uh, little gratitude is in order. Good morning. All right, those little signs along the trail, they are for the Erie to Pittsburgh Trail. Uh, which, or trail, route, I don't know what you want to call it at this point. Uh, it is an ambitious goal to connect the two cities. But as I understand it, there are a lot of gaps. So, uh, get their work cut out for them. But, it's still nice to get out and ride these sections like this. All right, another, another one. Let me get the headset on, the headlamp. This is called the Kennerdale, Kennerdale Tunnel. Oh, and it's the longest. The previous one was 3,000 feet. This is 3,350 feet. Wow. Okay, special note to anyone who wants to come ride this trail. You must bring a headlamp. It, it, there, I don't know how you could possibly do this trail without a headlamp. <laughs> wow.
That says bike trail. All right, I'm gonna follow the signs. I think, uh, is this the end? This is Franklin. Ah, looks like it keeps on going. Oh, this is the Samuel Justice Trail. I heard about this. All right, so I think I am at the end. I got in just in time for a very very gentle little rain here <laughs> but it looks like franklin is on the other side of the river according to this beautiful map right here so the food's over there and i'm over here <laughs> i'm gonna wait it out all right so i had a cliff bar and some water and there is just a little break in the rain a window so i'm gonna i'm gonna ride back I was gonna hang out for a while, but I think instead I'll hit it. So, watch said 26 miles. The sign back there said it's 31 miles. Hence my confusion. I'll leave it up to you. You ride and say what your mileage was. <laughs> Hey, one other thing, just in case you're thinking about doing this ride. In addition to needing a light for those tunnels, um, you probably need some food and drinks because uh, there's really no place in between to stop. I mean, it's 26, 27 miles, but um, other than the end points, there were no little towns to stop at, unless I totally missed them. Looks like some primitive camping there, about one to two miles south of Franklin. Take note.
Alright, that was really cool. There's a little area there called the uh, Indian God Rock. And uh, it's a rock with petroglyphs on it dating back to as far back as like 1200 AD. Uh, I tried to scale down a little hill there, but it's so muddy and there's no handrails. <laughs> I was a little worried about being able to get back up. So I looked at the pictures and that was pretty cool all by itself right there on the banks of the river and there's all these uh, citations to that rock in like French explorer and English explorers legit history right there Watch how dark, watch how fast it gets completely pitch black. <laughs> like now. <laughs> I even have the lamp on. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. The lamp illuminates the little markers. So it keeps you in a lane. Man, I would hate to come across another cyclist going the other way without a lamp. All right, the degree of, whoa, 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 whoa. Heck am I. the other thing. I don't know what's to the right or left of this trail. This is surreal. See that light? This is the proverbial light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Literally. Oh, it looks like there's like a little creek or something off to the right and left. Or not creek, there's a... There's water. Oh, wow. All right, that was a totally different experience going north to south and going south to north through that tunnel. <laughs> I guess it's because there's a turn. Well, it, you know, going north, going south to north, there's a turn right at the start. So you sort of can see the end. But going the other way, you're just riding pitch black. Bring a light. There's a view. Wow. That's a beautiful river. I just stopped to talk to some hikers that I actually passed this morning when I was headed the other way. And uh, my gosh, it's a couple. They're on their way hiking to North Dakota. <laughs>
right, the frequently asked question for today, or maybe I should say topic, because I get a lot of questions about weather. And what do I do about weather? How do I handle weather? And I'm, by the way, these frequently asked questions, I'd love to hear other people's thoughts. This is just my opinion. So if you got other thoughts, that's what the comment section's for. Okay, um, so a couple things just get away, get out of the way. I don't cycle in winter. I mean, I, okay, I, maybe a little exception. I rode the Schuylkill River Trail this last year. Man, this trail is bumpy in certain spots. Um, and it was cold, really cold. And I lost, you know, feeling in my fingers and toes. I don't like that. So I generally don't ride in the winter. Okay, that's one. Number two, I will not ride in lightning. So, um, lightning's deadly. And, you know, I have people argue with me, oh, it's such a low probability of being struck by lightning. Yeah, it's a low probability if you're sitting in your living room watching Wheel of Fortune and it's sunny outside. Okay, yeah, but if you're riding a trail out in an open field and there's a storm and lightning is striking, no. Uh-uh. So I will not ride in lightning. Now, I love riding in the rain, honestly. I'm never gonna stop the rain by complaining. I think it's fun. I don't have any problem with that. Um, but I guess some people have asked, like, do, do, do I look at the forecast? Like, do I look at the forecast and say, oh, I'm gonna cancel my trip because, you know, we're gonna have rain. No, I just kind of work around. Like today, I mean, it was raining this morning. So I delayed my departure by about, what, an hour until the rain stopped. Just now, I got to the north part of there and little rain started. So I waited until I looked at my app, waited for the clouds to pass, move on. So, yes, I will look. I, by the way, I love the weather bug app. Probably the thing I like most about it is it will send alerts uh, from where you're at. So, you know, if a storm just brewed up somehow, it will let you know, let you know that rain's coming in 15, 20 minutes. I think that's cool. So yeah, I will change my, you know, timing and itinerary. I'll pull over to the side and let a storm pass. That makes sense. How do you guys handle weather? What do you do? Be interested in here. There you go. Frequently asked question of the day. And just in time because guess what is right ahead of me? Anybody want to guess? Guess? I'll give you three guesses. <laughs> the second tunnel. Here we go. Alright, the difference with this tunnel is you can still see the you can kind of see the light at the end. That other tunnel going north to south, you couldn't see anything. just say that there was a little bit of the smell of herb in there so I don't know maybe there's a guy sitting off the side enjoying life in a different way So I'm almost at the end. Um, yeah, I, in summary, I like this trail. This is a nice, um, it's scenic, uh, quiet. It's pretty well maintained. There's some areas where the paved area is just kind of 
buckling up from roots and whatnot, but you know, that's the nature of paved trails. Um, you know, it made it for, to, for me, it made a great day trip. I just went over, yeah, 52 miles. So, you know, if you got 52 miles, go up and go back. Uh, if you, you know, I think this would also make a great little overnighter out and back. Maybe like that. Sorry, the other thing of, of interest was there, there were several primitive camp sites along the way, little campgrounds. You know, literally nothing. Just, I mean, it looks like somebody mowed the grass and there's a, uh, a space to set a tent. So that adds some interest there as to whether, you know, you'd wanna, there was that spot just almost at the end of the trail in Franklin that a uh, little primitive campsite. So, as a standalone trail, high marks. I give it a good grade. Taking that sign as a command. Hey, good morning. New day. I, it's Saturday. Yes, it's Saturday. And uh, new trail. I am going to. Uh, Go ride on the Red Bank Valley Trail. I think I got the name of that right. I was calling it something else before. <laughs> um, little change of plans. I was gonna do a full like end to end and back. And uh, unfortunately, it's one of those days where there's all sorts of weather alerts. It rained last night, like major, major rain. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, anyway, one of those rains. So I'm going to um, change it up, improvise a little bit, and I'm gonna go to New Bethlehem, not the old Bethlehem, the new one. And I'm gonna park at the trailhead, and I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna go west, I don't know, 10, 15 miles, turn around. Then I'm going to go east, 10, 15 miles, and turn around. I uh, just flipped a coin and west won, so <laughs> I'm going to head west first. Tunnel. Okay. <laughs> Proceed with caution. I'm going to get my headlamp. <laughs> All 
All right, that wasn't that long. <laughs> after yesterday, hey. After yesterday, I'm uh, I'm on alert. All right, could have ridden that without a headlamp. I think wasn't that long. Uh, you know, this surface. This is the greatest. This is the best surface. I, I mean, the crushed limestone, the sound of it under your tires is amazing. Morning. And, uh, yeah, wow. <laughs> I'm enchanted already by this trail. I, I, I think this is one of the most scenic trails I've ever been on. Can I say that? Yeah, I probably say that about every trail. All right. Look at this cool piece of art. All right, a few little facts on this trail, as I've just learned. <laughs> uh, it is supposedly 50, 51 miles long, um, 41 of which is continuous, and then there's a gap, which I guess they'll connect at some point. I don't know. Um, it follows along the Red Bank uh, creek or is that a river? One of the two. Um, it is not paved as you've seen, which I love, and uh, really well managed. It's like super groomed. It goes from Brookville, Brookville to East Brady and all points in between. So New Bethlehem, I think it looks like maybe it's kind of in the middle. So I was gonna go end to end and back, which would have been a, you know, at least an 80 mile day. Maybe a little ambitious, but my legs are feeling like, let's do something like that, but we'll see. It's actually looking like it's clearing up. So maybe that's still a possibility. another jackrabbit awesome You might be thinking, why is the river on the right side? I turned around. So right on cue, I was, what did I do? 12 miles. Um, I stopped. I was debating whether to just keep going because it's, well, it's beautiful. But uh, my phone bleeped. There's a storm that is supposed to hit in about a half an hour. And I'm about an hour away from New Bethlehem right now. So, well, it is what it is. <laughs> All right. 
right, so this may come across as a random, random reference. I decided about a, about a month ago to go back and binge watch Twin Peaks. For those of you that remember Twin Peaks, do you know that came out in 1990? Man. Anyway, uh, what a great show. I've really enjoyed going back. It's uh, almost, well, it is a step back in time, but today, I kind of, I don't know why, this trail is making me feel like I'm near the Great Northern. And that, uh, you know, Bob is gonna jump out on the trail. No, not Bob. How about Audrey? How about Audrey jumps out on the trail and does the Audrey dance? You know what I mean by the Audrey dance? Anyway, it's something about the pines. There's this very, very like delicate little conifer. I don't know what it's called, but wow, it's really beautiful. And it reminds me of Twin Peaks, that's all. Recommendation, yeah, bring, bring a light. <laughs> Don't try doing that without a light. To New Bethlehem and uh, <laughs> as you can see it is sunny and beautiful now if I take the camera and point to the left or the right there are storm clouds brewing but there look like there are two to the right and the left so I was gonna stop and Wait it out. I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna keep going. I'd like to go 10-15 uh, miles in the other direction. See the other side. All right, some bears. See, there's that, and then there's that, and then there's that. <laughs>
sign. This, this place is called Hawthorne. bummer I got a lightning alert and then I saw lightning darn I'm really loving this trail oh well Sorry, I kind of flew by this before, but this is a train turntable. Disappointed to cut this short today. Did you hear that? <laughs> right on cue. I just don't mess with lightning. Sorry. But I promise, mark my words, I will return. I shall return to this trail. Ah, uh, this is uniquely beautiful. Wow. Yep, I'll be back. Okay, frequently asked question. You thought I was gonna skip today? I'm not skipping. People have asked, what do you do when you're not riding? And this is what I do. <laughs> At least this is my, this is probably my favorite thing to do. I like to walk around small towns, get a cup of coffee, see the sights. I, it, it's fun. I like small town America, I really do. People are so friendly. So just now, when the uh, sirens went off, an older guy stopped by. I was putting the bike in the back of the car and he asked me, do you have a place to take cover right now? Because I live right here and you're welcome to come in my living room. That's small town America, all right? I made haste for a uh, coffee shop, but what a nice man. All right, New Bethlehem. Thumbs up. Hey, good morning. Sunday morning. Welcome to East Brady, PA. What a cute little town. Um, I'm getting a little late start. Part of it's my own fault. I started following signs. <laughs> I shouldn't have. I should, I should have just stuck with Waze or Google and let it take me to this parking lot. But for some crazy reason, I ended up about a half an hour trying to find this. So the trail today, as we will soon see, uh, is going to follow back along the Allegheny River. I think this is 35 miles long. So out and back, 70. I got that in my legs today. I feel pretty good. That's it. Let's go do it.
this um, this trail is also part of the Erie to Pittsburgh route. So there's little markers along here. Uh, was it two days ago? Two days ago, I was on the Allegheny River Trail, and you saw those. So this is a little. Well, this is further south, obviously. But uh, part of the same trail, just a you know fairly decent gap in between the two two trails. All right, what have we here? Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. So that was a coaling tower. So trains would stop there and the coal would go up from the pit up and over to um, that little vat where it would drop down into the the uh, train tender so tenders very cool how nice that somebody preserved that that would be very easy to tear down thanks for keeping it Okay, there's a series of locks along the Allegheny. This is lock number nine.
All right, well, I'm at, uh, well, I'm almost at 30 miles. And I think I'm gonna turn around because um, I'm hungry. <laughs> and it looked like there was more food back where I came from. So Ford City, what a cool little town. I kind of rode around the streets for a little bit. Um, this was the home of Pittsburgh Plate Glass or PPG. If you've ever seen the PPG building in downtown Pittsburgh, that is a sight to see. What a beautiful, it's a beautiful building. Looks like a glass castle. I'll put a picture right now. There, see, see what I'm saying? There it is. Um, all right, so I'm gonna head back. And uh, this has been a beautiful trail. Really, really nice, you know. It's really simple. <laughs> if you want to contemplate the universe and your place in it, I just don't think there's many better places to do it. The sound of gravel under your tires, peacefulness of a beautiful river. Awesome. All right, this is gonna be an old man comment. And I'm not saying this as a grumpy old man. I'm just saying it. I don't know about you, but I see fewer and fewer kids on bikes. And I think that's sad. <laughs> I think kids should ride. All right, enough grumpy man. I'm not grumpy, I'm really happy today. But, ah, you know, I saw that kid on a bike. He was having the time of his life. Good for him. Thank you, Fox's Pizza in Katanning, PA. Although, I'm, I'm struggling to get back in the groove. <laughs> Anybody else have that problem? That was a small pizza, but it's, it's making its presence felt already. My gosh, what a beautiful day today. Sunny warm it's like 78 and uh yeah beautiful hi how you doing hi There's, there, there wasn't much traffic this morning. People were in church. Good for them. Uh, and then this afternoon, well, lots of people out. It's nice. And I haven't been getting them all on camera, but lots of kids. So my heart feels free and happy. All right, it's that time again. The frequently asked question for this, today's ride, is um, it's a sensitive topic. You know how I know it's sensitive? Because it's probably, I'm gonna say the top second or third most asked question in private lines of communication, not in comments, in YouTube on videos but private and I get it it is about soreness guy wrote to me recently and said hey I don't know how you do it I went out to ride a trail my butt got so sore I had to turn around and go home and I'm always quick to ask are you talking about a sore butt or a butt sore because those are two completely different things, in my book at least. <laughs> so, 
let's deal with the first one sore butt um, look it, there's really only one thing you can do well okay you can wear padded shorts you can take uh, breaks every now and then you know I try to stop every 10 to 15 miles get off the bike walk around a little bit stretch although today I didn't do that until 30 so I'm a liar anyway um, look the, the biggest thing you do is just get used to you got it's time in the saddle that's all it is time in the saddle if you go ride a half an hour a couple days a week and then you decide you're gonna go on a tour and ride three four five six or more hours in the saddle you're gonna be sore now look it doesn't mean you did something wrong it's just it's just your body all right <laughs> I mean I don't know how to, okay so um, what can you do to get hours in the saddle I know a lot of people say well hey man I don't how you doing by the time I get home from work it's dark or you know okay I mean I bought an inexpensive trainer for my bike then I bought an inexpensive spin bike and uh, especially during the winter let me tell you I spend a lot of time on those and sorry for a shameless plug but one of the reasons I made these long videos is that you could simulate a day on a tour you know three four hours and anyway time in the saddle that's it all right the second question ah, let's enjoy this trail for a little bit I'll come back how about that I'll come back All right, you ready for part two? Part two. Zwei. Du. Um, okay, look, if you're a bike tour and you have never had saddle sores, I'm incredibly jealous. True confessions, I have really, really struggled with this topic. Um, it got so bad a few years ago, I just thought, okay. I mean, it sounds crazy to say, but I thought I was just gonna give up cycling. Uh, at least long distance cycling. I just thought maybe it's just my body. You know, my sit area is designed just poorly. And uh, I thought I was gonna stop cycling. I got some advice, I got some good advice. I got some not so good advice. So I'm gonna try to give you <laughs> the good advice. And the reality is, don't fall for the mistake that it's going to be one thing that's going to fix the problem. I think that's what I was trying to do. It's a combination of stuff. And uh, so I'm going to share the combination. First thing, keep yourself as clean as you can. Okay, I know that's hard, especially if you're camping. And, you know, I just did a bike trip that I went four days without a real shower and uh, 
you know, baby, baby wipes are great. They'll clean you up, get the bacteria out of your sit area, and more importantly, will wipe the salt out of the area from your sweat. If you've had a sweaty day, like t today's going to be a pretty sweaty day. Uh, you've got enough salt that you're basically wearing sandpaper underwear. That's not good. So even if it feels dry and you, you know, you can't see, there's salt there. Okay, you got to clean it off. So stay clean. Number two, padded shorts work. I already mentioned that before. They help. Um, the only thing I would add about padded shorts is make sure they fit. You know, saddle sores are generally from friction. And a few years ago, I was wearing a pair of shorts that were like, I don't know, 15 years old or something, maybe even older. And, you know, they're rubbing around. They don't fit well. Now, you know, I don't, uh, I don't wear spandex. I don't have the body for spandex. <laughs> But, uh, you know, there's a reason people wear really fitted stuff, because it just won't, it won't move around, okay? Chamois cream. Chamois cream is great, and there's all sorts of brands, and I'm not going to endorse any one. I even saw a video recently that Noxzema, of all things, has the same kind of qualities. Uh, okay. The only mistake I've made, or I've seen, discovered last year with uh, chamois cream or butt butter or whatever they call it. I like butt butter. Butt butter! Um, is, it says it right on the package. Apply liberally. That's not a political statement. <laughs> um, you got to put a lot on. More on. I had a tube and I was at a little bike expo recently and I was talking to the guy about this new brand. And I said, yeah, you know, it seems to work. I don't know. And, and he had a, had a tube of it, a big tube. And I said, you know, how long is that big tube? And he's like, yeah, that's, you know, you generally use that over like a, a week long tour. <laughs> I have a tube that's like three years old. So I think you gotta put more on. All right, the final tip and I don't want to start a war, so please... Oh, this is a tough one. It's your choice of saddle. When I was really struggling, I just kind of intuitively thought, oh, okay, I just need a really thick saddle with lots of padding. And, and guess what? The more padding, the worse it got. In fact, one saddle company said, oh, this will cure your saddle sores, and it was a big, thick saddle, and, and, it, and again, that was the worst trip that I had. I had to cut one of my tours short because it just got too painful. So anyway, about this time last year, I was on the Gap, and I happened to share a camp spot with a couple guys, and I mentioned having issues. And they both just kind of sheepishly didn't really want to say anything. And then they both pointed at their saddles. Now, I'm not sponsored by Brooks. And I'm not saying you should run out and get this saddle. What I am going to say is it was totally counterintuitive. This Brooks B17 leather, what appears to be a hard saddle. It takes two, three hundred miles to uh, condition it, wear it in, but I will have to say, <laughs> again, totally counterintuitive. This is the most comfortable saddle I've ever ridden on. And so in combination with the other things that I said, knock on wood, uh, I have not had a significant issue and I have been riding more than ever. Um, so anybody got any other ideas? If you do, Please comment. I know this is a struggle for some people, and I just feel really bad when people, hell, you know, similar to me, think they gotta give it up. Think there's no solution. There you go. There was our frequently asked question for the day.
All right, I just learned something really cool. So there are nine lock and dams in between Pittsburgh and East Brady. Prior to that, well, the reason they were put in was to control the water levels. So with the locks and dams, the, uh, the, the water levels are between nine and 12 feet deep, which allows, you know, boats to go up and down. Without the locks and dams, some parts of the Allegheny River would be 12 inches deep. Hence, why they have locks and dams on rivers. Oh, here we go. Here's the fork. Okay. That's the trail that I just was riding on. That is the Armstrong Trail. Now, boom. That's the trail I was on yesterday. The uh, Red Bank. Red Bank Valley Trail? Red Bank Trail? I think it's called the Red Bank Valley Trail. And they meet up right here. Boom. Boom. I didn't see riding back. What's up with this? Is this an actual like legit tunnel? Oh no, there's a fence. Okay. Huh. I wonder what they're gonna do with this. Okay, that sign back there had a really cool map that showed that that tunnel basically goes under this mountain and bypasses the town of East Brady altogether. So there's signs there that says tunnel rehabilitation. I don't know, I think they're gonna open it? I mean, that's a, that's a hell of a mountain right there that's cutting through, so. Well, I don't know. Anybody know? Comment below. Morning. Happy Monday morning to you. It's a great Monday. New week. Uh, for me, new trail. I can look at a map. I'm not. I'm, I'm the. I look at a map after I ride. You know, I go get a brochure at the start of a trail, and then after I ride, I sit down and look at it. Something with the timing there is off. Okay, today, Ghost Town Rail Trail. Why is it called the Ghost Town it Rail Trail? Mile. Because along this rail line are remnants of old towns that are long since gone. And, um, and there's apparently several of them that were significant towns along this rail line in the past. So, so of all the, the, the trails I've ridden this week, this is one that gets a lot of press so I'm really excited to see what this one's going to be about because, um, oh my goodness, sorry, I have got to stop. There's a muffler man. Oh my gosh, we've got to stop and get pictures of the muffler man. Hold on.
look at that. It's an original. It is an original muffler, man. See the one hand up, one hand down? He's been repurposed. Okay, sorry for the total diversion here. I'm a, I'm a muffler man fan. <laughs> you guys know the history of the muffler man? Look him up on, I'll put a description in Google. I, I don't know the exact number. There were a number of muffler men made and they, they, well, the, the reason they're called muffler men is because they, they would, they held a muffler and it was for a, uh, a company that sold those. And, uh, you can tell because again, it's one hand up, one hand down, but most of these little statues have, well, many of them are gone, obviously. There's a documentary on YouTube about a guy who restored these. I'll also put that in the description. And I think he's since passed away, but he had like, I want to say like 10 of them on his property, and then he had restored a whole bunch of them. Um, you see them all over the place. And again, they get repurposed. There's one in Ocean City, Maryland, that is outside of a little, you know, mini golf amusement park sort of thing. And he's been turned into a pirate, but he's a muffler man. All right. Sorry for the diversion. <laughs> I'm just, I, I love seeing muffler, man. It's, it's awesome. Um, they just pop up like in the strangest places. <laughs> the main corridor of this trail is, I believe, 30 miles long. And then there's some little offshoots and connectors that add another 20 to 25 miles. Um, but I'm going to stick with the main corridor and see how far I can get out. And then if the weather looks bad, I'll turn around and go back. It's that simple. <laughs> this is this is very cool. You know, it's kind of an overcast, sort of gloomy day. It's it's uh, you know the thing about this trail, it's so aptly named because you're riding along, and then you see something like that just sort of sitting in the woods. And sometimes it's back, it's back in the woods, and yeah, <laughs> and then the wind's whistling in your ears, and. Yes, ghost trail. So across the river there, stopped and read the signpost. That was the town of Cleghorn. 
and uh, small. I think most of these towns were pretty small, like, you know, 300 or less. There's one big one up here that's like another, another eight miles on the trail. That was probably the biggest. Anyway, we'll talk about that when we get there. I got off the trail to come down here and see an old furnace. The remnants of an old furnace. The Buena Vista furnace. Wow. Leave the bike for size. So that blast furnace it said that it employed about 60 workers. It said men and boys. Child labor. Uh, and you know, so you don't understand what's going on. You know, th what they were doing was mining iron ore out of the soil. You've seen some of these piles of stuff. They're getting iron ore. And they're putting it in these furnaces and creating what's called pig iron, which is just a kind of a raw, unrefined form of iron. And then put it on the train, take it into Pittsburgh, where it would be refined into more high-grade steel. It said they were paid relatively well. Uh, but they also said it was incredibly dangerous work. Just I can't imagine. Wow. This is history you can feel right here. This is, this is not just reading about facts and figures. So Wheatfield had a furnace just a little bigger than the one that we saw earlier. A few more people employed, same timeline. I didn't mention that these furnaces were in operation for less than 10 years. So that was another thing about these ghost towns is they kind of sprang up quickly and then slowly disappeared. It's kind of interesting. I always think about it, it's easy to get your head wrapped around the start of a town, you know? I mean, so somebody shows up, they put up a tent, they start to build the furnace, some other people show up. Next thing you know, there's some actual structures and you know, and then things are going, right? They're building stuff, whatever, but it's the other side of history, the other side of the timeline that 
I don't know, I can't get my head wrapped around. Like, okay, so the furnace stops working. And, you know, did they just all pick up and leave? Did some people stick around and continue to scratch out a living life? You know, I'm picturing, okay, so your neighbor to the right, they put the latch on their door, put all their stuff in a wagon and take off. And then maybe the person next to you on the other side does the same thing. And I don't know, was there a person at one time that just said, okay, I guess it's a wrap. Okay, so this area, all right, here's a good example. Look back in the woods there, you see that foundation? You see that all through here and it's, well, <laughs> it's, it's history. Um, so this area was called Wayrum and I stopped and read the plaque there. I actually was reading about this town on Wikipedia last night, which is the source of all knowledge and 100% accurate. But you know, this town lasted for 30 years. And like I was just saying, if you look at that plaque, look at the bottom line, and it says, <laughs> in 1934, they sold all the houses for lumber and one house remained. That's the history I wanna understand. What was that one person doing? Or family? Why did they stay? I guess it was home, 30 years? Maybe you were one of the first people here. Maybe you raised your family and this was the only home you knew, so you stayed. Here's a cool little graphic. They had a doctor's office and a company store and they had a baseball team. <laughs> wow. Here it is. Eliza Furnace. What is the Eliza Furnace you say? <laughs> there you go. All right, there you go. In a nutshell. Get away, fly. There's the process of making pig iron. Pig iron bars. There you go. That's the end product. Bars of pig iron. Another interesting graphic. Here's all the different jobs required to run a furnace. Look at that. So I stopped back at the furnace to talk to a lady who rode up on her bike and she suggested there's a little uh, trail that, that branched off. I didn't film it, but it branched off and went north and it's a little extension. And uh, well, it was her opinion and that is the most beautiful part of the trail. So I think I may, who knows, maybe I'll cut a little bit short here today and go ride that for a little bit. Or I'm just gonna come back. <laughs> I already have another trail that I didn't get to finish, so I'm gonna have to come back for that. Maybe I'll come back and do this.
definitely a grade. <laughs> uh, I, a decent grade. This is gonna be fun to go back down. Seven miles in, so as much as I'd like to go on to the end, I think I'm gonna. I just bought a sandwich, so I'm gonna stop and eat, and then I'm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna head back. perceive the uphill like I am experiencing the downhill right now. I guess this was a much a bigger grade than I thought. Yeah, I'm doing 18 miles an hour. That, that's, I don't do that normally. Did you think I was gonna forget? All right, I, I looked at my little card and uh, I'm gonna answer two easy ones. First one is, this is really simple. Do I listen to music while I'm out on the trail? And the answer is no. Or podcast for that matter. Uh, I love the sound of just nature. I love the sound of gravel under my tires. Listen to that. It's wonderful. Um, you know, I've talked to people who say, yeah, man, it gets boring. I, you know, maybe it's gonna get boring someday. I don't know. I rarely feel bored on these trails. 
And maybe it's because I'm just really trying to take it all in. So now, no listening to music. All right, question number two. Camping versus hotels. Or I'd say indoor versus outdoor. My ultimate would be like a ratio of two or three to one. Two to three nights outdoors, one night indoors. And really, it's just practical. As I was talking about yesterday, staying clean, getting a shower every, you know, two, three days is probably a good thing. Uh, I also try to stay in places that have laundry, have a laundry room, because, uh, you know, I'm not carrying two weeks worth of clothes. So stopping and doing that's good too. Um, having said that, I really enjoy camping. I stay in hotels in some places when I don't know where I'm, where I'm, what I'm doing. You know, I don't know where a campground is, and I don't know about parking, and you know, whatever. Yeah, then I fall back on a hotel or a motel. But camping, you know, it's, it's so great to meet people in campgrounds, other riders, or just people getting away for the, you know, day, weekend, whatever. It's just so much more conducive to conversation. And I've met so many nice people, campgrounds. I've had so many great conversations. My decision to retire really was made last year at a campground. Steve, if you're watching this, Steve. You know what I'm talking about, Steve from Detroit. Sorry, I never got your last name. If you ever see this, that was just a heck of a conversation. He has no clue. Listen, everybody, Steve has no idea how much his words meant to me. Sitting around a campground. You just can't do that in a hotel. And of course, I just think campgrounds are way more relaxing. Sitting around a campfire, sleeping outdoors. I remember last year, no, that was two years ago, sorry. Staying in a campground, I took the rain fly off of my tent and it was one of the clearest nights that I can remember in my entire life. I know because I got out my glasses. The sky was just, I mean, it was one of those nights full of stars that you'll never forget. And uh, I'm laying there in my tent, looking up through the top of my, you know, mesh tent and, and it was just, it was incredible. So anyway, there you go. I guess if I were to say camping versus hotels, it's, yeah, it's three to one. <laughs> That's my opinion. I don't think staying in hotels is like cheating or something. I had somebody said to me recently, I was like, come on. And, and quite frankly, if money's not an issue, or let's say you're gonna go on a, you know, once a year tour or something and you know, I mean, look, carrying all the gear is, is not a small matter. So if you want to stay in hotels, good for you. Don't, don't let that stop you. There you go. All right, my phone just dinged. I looked at it. It says there is a severe storm alert. <laughs> so it's time. Top gear down in a tuck. 18.2 miles an hour. I'm almost there.
Well, I made it back, uh, but <laughs> I had a, a little repair I had to do. That's always fun. This started making me nervous. All right, so I don't know. It's, it's, it's gonna blow over, whatever. Um, okay, look, super high marks. That is a great, great trail. I understand now. I mean, I've had so many people tell me, you gotta go out and do the Ghost Town Trail. And I, actually, I had plans to ride it before COVID. And then, well, you know, one thing led to another. I didn't get a chance to do it. I get it. That is, that is up there with some of the finest trails ever. But here's the thing. I stopped and got this map. It's called the Trans-Allegheny Trails brochure. Okay, you turn to the back of this thing. Trans-Allegheny Trails to do. Westmoreland Heritage Trail, Kiskey Riverfront Trail, Roaring Run Trail, West Penn Trail. Come on, what are you doing to me? <laughs> here I am coming out here to, to ride the, the trails and here's all these other ones. <laughs> I'm going to have to come out sometime and do all these now. <laughs> all right, that's enough for today. Thanks for coming along. All right, I'd like to say it's a beautiful Tuesday morning. <laughs> uh, but, wow, man, it was clear. And then all of a sudden, boom, this hit. So... Well, all right, I don't know what day this is. I'm not even gonna try. It's day seven. All right, new day, new trail. I am returning to a trail that I promised I would come back to. I promised last fall. And that is, drum roll, the Montour Trail. Are you familiar with the Montour Trail? It basically kind of circles around metropolitan Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh and all of its beautiful suburbs. Uh, I'm going to start in downtown and I'm going to make my way up to Coriopolis and I'm going to get on the Montour Trail and I'm going to ride it all the way around. Then I'm going to catch back onto the, uh, the Gap Trail and come back into downtown Pittsburgh. I'm going to do that in two days. It's not a terribly, I mean, you can ride it all in a day, I guess, if you wanted to. I'm going to split it up and enjoy it a little bit. Well, I'm going to try to enjoy it. The, the, I don't know. The forecast was for intermittent rain, but this is pretty serious stuff here. All right, hey, just random fact of the day. I'm sorry, but I would love, you know, I talk a lot about useless statistics and studies and things. I would love for someone to do a neurological study of something that I just didn't amazed by. And that is, I was in a quickie mart the other day picking up some drinks and uh, for the bike. Drinks, drink drinks, not drinks, you know, drink drinks. And, um, and over the speaker they were playing Kenny Rogers singing Lady. Remember that song? I think Lionel Richie wrote it, Lady. Anyway, they're, they're playing it, all right? That song has been on like the peripheral periphery of my mental state for uh, probably two days now. <laughs> Why? Why does that happen? What is that? What is it about? I mean, I don't. I don't think I have a single Kenny Rogers song in my library of songs. I mean, nothing against Kenny Rogers. I like Kenny Rogers. In fact, have you ever heard Kenny Rogers? A lot of people don't know this. Do you know that Kenny Rogers was kind of a rocker before he was a country singer? Go back and listen to a song. I think it's I think it's called Just Checked In or Just Checking In. It's a chorus. Just checking in to see what condition my condition is in. Go back and listen to that. He was a rocker. This morning, brushing my teeth. I bust out and lady. I'm singing verses from lady. Why?
away from bikes. <laughs> Not quite. I define a smile break as just that. It's taking a break until you have a smile on your face again. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know there's not a whole lot that you can do in a super urban area. But, you know, when cars don't even observe the bike symbol and they just start laying on their horn and you're like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> I literally pull off. I, you know, honestly, it's heavy traffic and I see people behind me. I just pull off. I pull and let them go by and then I wait for a break and I go some more. But when there's nowhere to go. <laughs> All right, enough complaining. There you go. This is the beginning. That smile break took about 20 minutes. And if I didn't have to stop for the flat, I probably would have just been smarter just to keep riding because I'm already in a good mood because this trail is really nice. It's beautiful. So the trail uh, in its entirety is, I believe, just over 60 miles. But that includes all the little offshoots and uh, little connectors. This, for example, one of the cool things is this connects up with uh, the airport. So, if for some reason, let's say you wanted to come into the airport and, uh, and you know, well, make your way to the city, although I would not suggest doing what I just did. Uh, anyway, there's a trail and it goes all the way around. The other thing is on the south end, which is where I'm going, near Clareton. It connects up, well, you go across whatever river that is right there. Is that the Yakagani? And it connects up with the Gap Trail. So if you wanted to go from the airport and connect with the Gap, you'll just miss all the urban Pittsburgh stuff, which I found out last year a lot of people do that. They skip the downtown part of the Gap. Whatever, to each his own. It's a mix of paved and crushed limestone and uh, very nice surface. There are a few campgrounds. I believe there are three right now, but I read that they're gonna potentially create some more. Morning. And uh, I was gonna camp tonight, but last night I made the decision to not camp because I'm spending tomorrow night with some friends and then I'm gonna be camping three nights in a row and I just did not want to have morning I didn't want to have a wet tent sitting in my either my bags or in the back of my van that didn't sound good so I'm gonna be indoors tonight and then uh, yeah little two-day trip so again, this is not a huge long trail and you know, you could turn this into an overnight or you could potentially even ride it in one day if you were so inclined, but uh, very peaceful.
believe this is Finley Township. The sign back there is a little confusing, but at some point we're going to see a trail come in from the right that goes out to the airport. I thought it was coming up here shortly. I also might be a liar. All right, while we're waiting to see if I'm a liar, let's add a few more bullet points. Morning. Hey. The trail is named after, well, there are many famous Montours, but the trail is named after a Montour named Andrew Montour. He was of French and Native American ancestry, which made him ideal to be an interpreter and a guide and a translator uh, for many important people, one of which was a General George Washington. So, I believe he was a commission officer in the military and his son played a part in the uh, Revolutionary War I know that so anyway um, you know there's Montoursville there's Montour Township there's up to the right here is Montour Run Road a lot of Montour stuff and then there's the Montour Railroad that back in its heyday it served I want to say 20 uh, I was reading this last night 27 mines, coal mines, and uh, in its heyday, I remember this, it moved 7 million tons of coal. 7 million tons of coal. That's, yeah, per year, sorry, per year. <laughs> Okay, look, we have to interrupt this broadcast to put this number in context. And this is clearly a job for Bicus, which, as you know, is my personal computer for useless statistical analysis. So, 7 million tons of coal divided by the average weight of an adult elephant of 4 tons is 1,750,000 elephants being transported each year around the Montour rail line. However, that barely does it justice. So let's take it one step further. An adult elephant takes up 480 square feet. The Panthers football stadium, the only stadium to publish their stadium's area dimensions, occupies 1,400,000 square feet. So according to Bicus, the amount of coal that was transported on the Montour Railway each year could have filled over 600 stadiums with adult elephants. We're not talking about just occupying the field. This is filling the stadium. Yeah, so anyway, it went out of service. And now over the course of the last many years, they've just like a lot of rail trails, piece by piece, connected this thing. By the way, there are still a few gaps. So at the end of this, bridging the gap over towards McKeesport. We'll see what kind of adventure that's going to be tomorrow. But uh, this part, all connected, all beautiful. Good for the soul. of Imperial with a road called California Hollow.
And there it is. Okay. I'm gonna go over and look at this. This is the first of the campsites that are primitive campgrounds, but yeah, that's cool. Little hut and a fire ring and a picnic table over there. Hey, well done. Okay, so one big observation. If you've never been to Pittsburgh, and by the way, if you've never been to Pittsburgh, you should visit Pittsburgh. I really like this town. This is, you know, over the years, I've been coming here since 85. Uh, yeah, around 1985. You know, it's just got a lot of character to it. And there's a lot of culture here, a lot of history. They got great sports teams and, uh, and beautiful suburbs. You know, the, the days of like Pittsburgh being the city that you couldn't see the sun because of all the pollution, that's so far in the past. It's, I don't know, I've had many great times here. Uh, so why was I saying that? Oh yeah, one thing about Pittsburgh, it is an incredibly hilly city. Like, yeah, just big hills. So the idea that there's a relatively flat, right, right as I said that, I'm going up a, a grade, uh, relatively flat trail that just meanders through, you know, valleys and suburbs here is uh, amazing. I've only been through one tunnel today. So, yeah, pretty amazing. Uh, again, not severe grades. It's not completely flat, but you know, if you think of all the hills in Pittsburgh, I would have thought this would have been up and down and up and down. And it's not. Come visit Pittsburgh. It's worth it. If you're doing the Gap Trail, schedule a day. Schedule a day to enjoy the downtown. Go to Primanti Brothers and have a sandwich. Well, you'll go to Point State Park. Anyway, go see the Pirates or the Steelers. There's a lot of cool stuff to do. So that brought to you from a guy who's originally from Cincinnati, a rival city. <laughs> plug September 23rd the uh, tour of the Montour join hundreds of your friends for the 21st annual tour of the Montour trail it's gonna do the whole thing that's pretty cool I don't know maybe I'll come back for that all right this is the Montour trail over here to the right but this is the panhandle connector which I was just reading a poster um, connects with West Virginia. I've heard of this trail somewhere. All right, so look, we started in Pittsburgh. We went all the way up here. That was not fun. And I missed the connector to the airport. That was back in Finley Township somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where. And Boggs was where that campground was. And now, where are we? Here, yeah, okay. So here's this trail that says, goes off to Weirton, West Virginia got to do some research on that one and I'm here I'm sorry okay there's the, the trail and then I'm gonna end the day down here so I don't have that much further to go I got like maybe six more miles all right we got here the 
viaduct. If you're a new viewer to this channel, I always record <laughs> beginning to end by duck bridges and tunnels. the camera picks up but you know it's been kind of drizzly all day <laughs> uh, no complaints it's really been actually kind of refreshing it's it's uh, I think it's like mid 60s yeah somewhere in mid 60s and you know it's not like rain rain it's just it's just drizzly it's just I like it I like riding in rain like this in weather like this area is a lot gelati or gelati I could use some gelati right now the Venice Bridge Sticker bush. My luck, that will puncture my tire yet again. <laughs> my poor tire. <laughs> I got four punctures in it. At some point, I don't know. When do you replace a tire? <laughs> How many punctures before you say, okay? I think this is the second little camp thing. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm not even sure what the name of this is. It's like a primitive site up there. And then, I don't know what this little... I seriously doubt this little hut is meant to be for camping. <laughs> That's pretty small. 
Oh, is it up here? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so it's not... I think this is called like the Cecil Henderson area. So, okay, it looks like there's a couple, two, three spots. Okay, maybe a little more, and there is a, uh, there's a hut in that spot. Yeah, I, I lost count. Looks like five or six. Looks like five or six primitive spots right there. And uh, that's actually where I was going to stay tonight. And I guess I'm wimping out. <laughs> I already explained why. I think it's a good idea to stay inside tonight. You know, I was just not feeling good about the, my tire. <laughs> Too many plugs. And uh, so I just happened to look on Google for a bike shop. Just thinking, ah, I got some time this afternoon. Maybe I'll stop. Find out there's a bike shop right there on the trail, the Tandem Connection. Any of you in the Pittsburgh area, South Hills, on the trail, I'm going to tell you what, that's one of the nicest group of people I've talked to. <laughs> Super helpful, and uh, I don't know if he, I don't know if he did it because I was, knew I was on a little tour, but fit me in, and uh, got me situated with some new tires, and and fixed my squeak. <laughs> he actually figured it out, as opposed to, ah, uh, you're hearing things. He figured it out. Nice guy. Great job. Thank you so much. I am good to go for another 2,500 miles. <laughs> I saw this earlier, a spirit tree. Honor a spirit by leaving a memory of a happy time, a lost loved one, special friend, or a pet. Okay, so I left something in honor of somebody. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, I was told, ah, there it is. What do you know? Right as I turn on the camera, there is a new connector pack. South Point Montour connector and as I understand it right it was just dedicated just what a weekend ago the guy said so it just goes up the hill to the Hilton Garden Inn where I will be staying indoors dry and happy tonight Okay, this is Pittsburgh. <laughs> this is what I was expecting to do a lot more today. Climbing hills. And, well, that's not what the Montour path is about. I bet you thought I forgot. Okay, the frequently asked question, and this is stretching frequent because I think I've been asked four times um, recently. If you watched my video from, from my trip in Florida, I had a run in with a, a motel guy who like just, he was dead set. He was not gonna let me take my bike in the room. And um, <laughs> it got, it got kind of ugly. <laughs> but I've been thinking about since then, and a few of you have had some good suggestions that I thought I'd, I'd pass on to the rest about how to deal with hotel staff. And I think there's really four things. All right, hold on just a minute. Much better. All right, um, four things. First thing is, well, this really, this isn't, this is number one, this is number zero. 
be cool, man. I mean, you know, you do you want somebody walking in your living room with a bike you've been riding out in the mud and rain all day? Of course not. So, you know, try to understand. He's, a good hotel, at least a decent hotel, is, look, they treat it like a home. So have a little respect. Um, number one, I, I go to a local hardware store and I buy one of those bags of, I think it's called like auto rags. And you can get like, you know, 20 rags for like, two bucks or something. That's a, maybe an exaggeration, but I throw two or three of those in my bike bag at the beginning of a trip. And, you know, if I get someplace and again, it's been muddy or just super dusty or whatever, I wipe it down before I go taking it in someplace because, you know, you had big chunks of mud and leaves and rocks and whatever else hanging on it. Yeah, you don't want to do that. The other nice thing about those auto rags is they're so cheap, you know, if I've been wiping the chain off and it's all greasy and nasty and everything else, guess what? I just throw it away. Yeah, I know that's wasteful. I'm sorry, but I throw it away because it's nasty and it's got oil and grease on it. So, okay, that's number one. Number two, sometimes I'll ask at the front desk if they have a hose or somewhere out back where I could spray the bike down. And then I wipe it. I dry it off with that with a towel so um, you know generally that helps third thing I do is I always request a first floor room so you know I'm not walking down getting in an elevator going up walking down hallways to get where I need to be um, I do that ahead of time when I book the room so that they know but the fourth thing and this is why I wanted to ask I wanted to go through this today is what just happened in the lobby. So this guy was cool, okay? He looked at me and he kind of looked over at the bike and, you know, I could see a little flicker of, oh, geez. And he, I saw him take the key. He already had a key printed. He took the key back and, you know, whatever they're doing back there. And he put the key back in. So he was putting a new number on the room. And he said to me, would you do me a favor I put you in a room right next to the side exit. Would you mind riding around and coming in there to your room? He wasn't a jerk. He wasn't being, you know, he was being cool. And I thought that is a great idea. If you could request ahead of time, hey, look, I'm on my bike. Could you put me in a side room near the exit? That's a, that's a good move. Um, so four ideas. One thing there is I never try to hide that I have a bike. I mean, I, one person told me, oh, and I never take my bike in. I always hide it around the corner and then go in and check in and then, then bring my bike in. I don't want to do that. That just, I don't know. I think that gives cyclists a bad name. Okay, there's your frequently asked question. That's it for the day. I'm going to go get some dinner. Get ready. Finish up the Montour Trail tomorrow. Looking forward. No rain in the forecast. More beautiful trail ahead.
Hey, good morning. It is, um, I believe today is Wednesday, which would make this day eight. I'm finishing out the um, Montour Trail today, which I have really, really super enjoyed. Morning. Um, yeah, just uh, astonishingly nice. Restful night last night, and uh, it's about 62 degrees, so it's a little chilly. Uh, no complaints, just, you know, it's a little chilly and very misty. Like, really thick humidity, because it rained most of last night. There's supposed to be no rain today. Today, tomorrow, and the next day, so that bodes well for my next few days of cycling because there's I'm going to be camping and there's no alternative <laughs> so there is no take cover other than maybe a uh, one of those huts if there are any a couple little things I was reading about this trail last night one of the little factoids was that this the, the people who manage this trail claim this is the longest suburban rail trail in the country I don't know I'm gonna take them at their word that's an interesting little fact toy morning oh gotta stop here this is cool morning Like maybe a little train stop I don't know all right so if you happen to watch the video I made last fall I started here with my wife for those of you that don't know that I actually bike with my wife every now and then There's a little fork in the road here. I thought this was confusing last time because it's paved to the left, so you want to go left, right? But that's actually an extension that goes to Bethel Park. This <laughs> is the Montour Trail, so. Note, if you ever do this, you'll want to turn right. Hill Road. This is called the Library Viaduct. I'm looking around for the library. I don't see a library. segment here. Here's a sign. Next left, Stewart Road. Alright, little note, that uh, Stewart Road sign was completely grown over, so... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be able to connect that or not.
All right, that was a new one. All of a sudden, a golf ball just bounced down on the trail, off into the bushes. There must be a golf course up there, and somebody is not having a great round. What do you know? A 9% slope. <laughs> this is kind of out of nowhere. Ah. And looks like back on the road for a little bit. Oh no, just a very little bit. Also, the signage on this trail is pretty, pretty fantastic. Good job on that. Morning. said about a half mile on the road. Wow. Hello, around the corner. <laughs> oh jeez. Morning. So there's uh, there's definitely some gaps, but when I look over to the side here, there's a rail line. I think the thing is that it might still be in use. It it looks like you know fully maintained, and it's not like rails fall into pieces or anything. So I think some of these gaps are just they're going to be here for the duration. Wow, that was kind of nerve-wracking. There's the sign over there. I believe this is, yes it is, this is the official end, right here. Well done. So, 
Now I need to start looking at maps because I'm going to make my way over to the Gap Trail in McKeesport. And I don't know what kind of signage there's going to be. Ah, it looks like there's a sign there. The Steel Valley Trail. All right. I've never heard of that. <laughs> that must be the trail. There's a little sign that says Two Gap Trail right there. <laughs> Glad I saw that out of the corner of my eye. for the little signs. Hell nice. All right, this is the uh, town or city of Glassport. Thing to the Montour Trail. <laughs> All right, I missed the turn. I know exactly where I'm at. <laughs> There's the trail right down there. All right, it's official. I am on the Gap Trail, headed towards Pittsburgh. This is uh, McKeesport. You know, it's funny. I. It's not an exaggeration, it's funny how trails can look so different going the other direction. So, let's see how this looks. I don't know if you can see him back there or not. I stopped and talked to a trail volunteer who's clearing, he's got a hedge trimmer and he's just clearing off all of this overgrowth. How nice, thank you trail volunteers. See all this over here? Wow, nice job. Exhibit A. I have ridden the Gap Trail nine times. Nine times. And I'm generally, when I'm going this way, I'm looking over there. With all these old steel mills and whatnot. Do you know what I have never seen in any time I've ridden this? That's Kennywood Amusement Park. That's like a huge roller coaster. <laughs> I've never seen it.
there's a drone up in the air it must be taking some sort of like company photo <laughs> hey, what do you know this is paved now <laughs> this used to be uh used to be just gravel i think am i in the right place of that yeah i think this used to be gravel gravel and dirt all right we're in terrible towel land Well, good morning. Um, yesterday I was really unaware and naively riding my bike thinking that it was just s some haze or some uh, humidity as the one person told me. <laughs> um, the fires in up north, smoke has been coming down this way and um, well you can see the end result. I mean here's the Ohio and there is uh, Mount Washington and of course if you just look that way you can see all the beautiful downtown buildings of pittsburgh so um i mean i've been standing out here for just a few minutes and my lungs are already feeling kind of ugh. so not looking good for today all right i really have nothing to do but just to wait it out it's seven right now seven a.m and uh, I don't have to check out of here until 11, so let's see what happens. I think all the cancellations for everything I have ahead, including Amtrak, are probably too late to cancel and get a refund. <laughs> so, ah, what a bummer. Well, we'll see. Maybe miraculously some wind or rain will come through. There's no rain today. The day that we need rain, that's life. Believe it or not, I do try to be an adult at times, and part of being an adult is learning to avoid things that might get you sick, like poor air quality and breathing problems. And while I could lie and say I was that adult who made an informed decision, I went back and forth all morning until I finally just flipped a coin. Heads I ride, tails I go home. And well, home I went. And despite trying to soothe myself with Dunkin' Donuts, I was still really bummed out. The Gap Trail is something really special, and quite frankly, it's worth the risk, but given my propensity for respiratory issues, I think the coin made the right choice. All that means is that I have unfinished business and will need to come back and do a makeup ride. So the great 712 ride became the 68 ride. I can't say enough how thankful I am to have done the six trails I was able to experience. As usual, I met nice people who shared a little of themselves with me as I tried to share some of myself in return. I spent some precious time with some incredibly dear friends, watching the pirates grab a win. I saw nature at its finest, breathing fresh air for all but the last day, dodging raindrops and storms, admiring majestic rivers and creeks, 
hearing the echoes of blast furnaces and ghost towns. I hope this might encourage you to check out some of these trails, and if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment. And if you like these videos, please subscribe, then you'll get notified of future trips. I still haven't figured out what's next. My first rag bri is just around the corner in a few weeks. After that, maybe the Erie Canal or back to Florida. And now, of course, I've got to get back to the Gap as well. As always, thanks for watching. Best wishes for your own adventures. And I hope to see you out there sometime soon.